Hi everybody! Hi Tamar! Welcome to our video about Daenerys Targaryen as Genghis Khan. Confirmed! We've been talking about the inspiration for Daenerys being Genghis Khan, the great Mongol conqueror of the 1200s or so, mm -hmm. for some time. And now, this season, in season 6, it seems to have been confirmed. 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 Okay, so, we look at the story less as fantasy mm -hmm. and more as a historical fiction, historical drama, mm -hmm. with some fantasy sprinkled on top. Yeah, like Westeros is very similar to Britain. Uh, the Common copy, yeah. Uh, yeah. There were all the roses, it's like the inspiration of right. the start of the story of the civil war that is going on uh, in Westeros. Uh, the three cities are very, very similar uh, to the Italian city-states in the Middle Ages, more advanced, more urban. A slaver's Bay is like the Orient uh, that, was, that is stuck in some ancient uh, ways and stuff like okay. that with the pyramids, you know, and harpies. Uh, and then there are the Dothraki. The Dothraki, for me, uh, was uh, very similar to the Mongols. Not only the Mongols, but as a typecast of a host people, right. pastoral nomads, uh, warriors. warriors uh, they put a lot of emphasis on physical strength. Right. Fragmented people, there are lots of right. tribes and holds with a specific Khal or Khan. And of all these tribe uh, horse people, the most famous in history were the Mongols because they were the most successful. And who was the most successful of these Mongols? Genghis Khan. Genghis mm -hmm. Khan. And before Genghis Khan, the Mongols uh, were like, uh, you know, like the weather. They would sometime appear okay to pillage and burn and take some ransom and go back to their villages and right. tribes and, and come back next year. Then came this Genghis Khan, or this Daenerys figure. Okay. Not necessarily from outside, he was a Mongol from, this, right. from one of the tribes, but he managed and she managed to unite the Mongols, give them purpose and put some religious context into it. Okay. He had a mandate from heaven and she is the stallion that might mount the world. The, the mother of dragons. The mother of dragons, the prince that was promised, the Azua High, everything. Right. Magical creatures at her uh, disposal. Right. During that time, the way the Mongols rode their, horse, their horses to the people that, that fought against them, they seemed to have magical abilities. Mm -hmm. With their horses, they could ride and, uh, and shoot arrows at the same time. And they were absolutely incredible in a way that we now cannot understand. Yeah. The horse was a, a part of them. When we saw Daenerys burning all the other cows and then standing on top of the sea of the brown people and now leading all the Dothraki, she's not like a regular Khal, even like Khal Drogo. She's mm -hmm. not like Khal Drogo. She's something else. Yeah, yeah. She's like this, you mentioned, mythical figure. Mm -hmm. Daenerys and, Ka and uh, Genghis Khan, they command and respect loyalty. Right. They were formidable. Right. F formidable. 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 Fierce. Cruel even. We can expect that from Daenerys. Right. And you have to be in order to rally around to, to rally the support of these kind of people. Yeah, yeah. And they also th stood out uh, physically. Genghis Khan, okay. uh, I guess, were probably very tall or something like that. Okay. And he had red hair. Okay. Rumor says it that he had okay. red hair. She had silver hair and she's a woman. Okay. So she stands out. Right. Also, the title Genghis Khan okay. is a religious title. Not his given name? No. His given name is Temujin. Right. Genghis Khan is like the universal ruler mm. and she is the stallion that mounts the world. Okay. So the Dothraki and the Mongols, from their own corner, small corner in Earth, on right. Earth, had this prophecy that someday maybe uh. <laughs> they will go out of their small uh, okay. uh, corner right. and command respect that they deserve. Okay. And Genghis Khan was this kind of a figure, and Daenerys is like the mother of the dragon, breaker of the chains. Stalin that marks the world, Prince that promise, Azura High, and whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. Genghis Khan was declared as the representative of uh, this supreme Mongol god. What's his name? <laughs> which, which means <laughs> eternal blue sky. I didn't know that. Okay, okay, okay. So now we're at the point in history, Genghis Khan and Daenerys both united all the tribes and now they're going out of the Dothraki Sea. So what did Genghis Khan do after that? And, and how do you think that will play out in the story with Daenerys Targaryen? 
Genghis Khan conquered uh, basically the entire Asia or something like that. Uh, he started with China, right. the yeah. ancient foe of this um, host people, you know, right. the city dwellers, right. the farmers, is, the, yeah, that we sometimes take uh, bribes from them and steal their children or something like that. They, they hide behind these high walls, right. but now we will conquer them. And they had like a siege, new siege uh, tactics, yeah. right? They used the uh, biological weapon as well. Yeah, yeah, they used to throw oh, diseased nice. bodies, infected bodies. Oh, right. Some speculation uh, say that the Black Plague is a result right. from some, uh, one of these uh, tactics. So that's like the, the white mare? In the books, this uh, disease that uh, right. they used to spread it, throwing uh, infected bodies to Marine in uh, right. during the siege. <laughs> So he conquered China, and then he went the other way, Iraq, up to the Middle East, mm -hmm. and even all the way to Eastern Europe. Yeah, yeah. They were this close to conquering all of Europe. Yeah, yeah. Wow, imagine. Nothing could stop them. Yeah, yeah. Imagine what it would be like. The world would be just totally different. Yeah. It would be a different world. He spread his seed as well. Mm -hmm. The seed is strong with Genghis Khan. How yeah. strong? So strong that it's estimated that 15 million people living today mm. are descended of the great Khan. Just see this. Bro. Also, during his wars against the Muslims, when news got to Europe that the Muslims were being ransacked by a king, a fierce king from the west, from there the was east. this from the east, from the east. There was this myth that, uh, that he is Prester John, some kind of mythical Christian king on the other side of the world. Yeah. And they were expecting him to come over and save them and bring whatever. Yeah. And then when he got there... Uh, the it escalated quickly. Escalated quickly. Mm -hmm. And you can say that the, the damage that Genghis Khan did to certain parts of Asia it, it still uh, holds today. They have not uh, recuperated from that. He destroyed Baghdad, destroyed. Uh, which was uh, probably the largest city in the world back then. Very advanced. Right. And some say that it was the start of uh, the decline of the Muslim world in terms of science, science right. and technology and culture. Right. Uh, and then after that, they like left the stage uh, for the right. Western world to fill the void. Uh, a, so lot of, a lot of scriptures of the Greeks and Romans uh, came to Europe running from these Mongols mm. uh, by refugees, from uh, Muslim refugees and stuff like that. So maybe a lot of refugees, uh, nobles from the free cities will flee Essos to Westeros and this mm -hmm. will be the beginning of the rise of Westeros when the story exactly. is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can definitely see her. Definitely? I can definitely see her conquering, destroying Karth, Karth. Volantis, Creating a lot of havoc in the free cities. Right. A lot of refugees. A lot of refugees. A lot of, a lot of blood. A lot of blood, yeah, yeah. It will be very, very hard for us to root for her. I think that makes sense from a story-wise perspective. This is what George R. R. Martin does. Yeah. Usually what he does is take a character that we despise and mm -hmm. then make us understand him. But here, maybe he's doing the, the other way around. We cheer for her because she's the underdog, yeah. but she's the underdog no longer, no, no more. And it will uh, go straight to her head. Power is a drug, right. a dangerous, addictive, addictive drug. It, it changes your brain. That's yeah, yeah. science. That's science. And in terms of her role in the story, <coughs> she's a mythical character, mm. not a political character. She sucks at politics. She tried to be a political character. She yeah. tried to rule Marine. Yeah, she sucks. Yeah, and she, she was depressed. And she was depressed. She felt like she's in a cage or something like that. Right. She made a lot of mistakes. But she, when she's on the field commanding a vast army, right. she's unstoppable. So as we see it, she's a mythical uh, character. Okay. So her ending should be mythical. Like she's the fire in the Ice and Fire song. Right. So Heard she can't it? win. She can't win politically. Imagining her sitting on the throne next to John, her half-brother slash uh, nephew, nephew, whatever. And she's making like day-to-day -day decisions. Okay, I will raise taxes by 0.25%, yeah. yes. So she's a mythical character in a real politics world, like right. a realistic world. So as a mythical 
character in a realistic world mm -hmm. she doesn't have a place uh, in the uh, aftermath and the conclusion right. of the story in terms of the politics right so her bringing on the destruction all over Essos, all over Essos and maybe in, uh, to Westeros as well will be a great uh, setup for laying down the foundation for something new okay politically speaking but she will not have a part in it I okay. think. And like we said in a previous video about the Dothraki, maybe he will use what happened to, to the Mongols when they tried to, to cross their narrow sea mm -hmm. to Japan and were hit twice by tsunamis. Typhoon. Typhoons. Ty and here the Dothraki are scared to cross the narrow sea, mm -hmm. which means they probably will try to cross it someday. Yeah. And then maybe this would be the historical inf uh, inspiration for some kind of storm, like a winter storm, that yeah, yeah. will make it so ironic that the first time that they try to cross it, mm -hmm. as Alanis Morissette prophesied, they will die. Remember, winter is coming in the narrow sea because it's narrow. It's like a wind trapper. Right. Yeah, it is known. <laughs> so the narrow sea is not safe and have you noticed the narrow sea Daenerys the narrow sea Daenerys the narrow sea Daenerys <laughs> hold the door <laughs> so too soon too soon Sorry. okay so if you enjoyed the video please click like please thank you for all your likes and thank you to our patrons some of them are here if you want to become a patron you too there is a link in the description we have a lot of cool perks in patron only videos and for all you new subscribers, first of all, thank you for subscribing. But you might not know, you might not know that we have a second channel. It's the same setup, the same conversation, but instead of talking about Game of Thrones, we talk about Bible and history and other TV shows and movies and the like. It's called The Wandering Jews. Please subscribe, show this channel some love and we'll go back to doing some more, so a, a, a lot more videos in this channel once uh, the season is done. And if you want to get all our videos for the season and beyond, please subscribe. Bye everybody, we'll see you all next time.